Hi everyone! Today I'm going to show you how Classx integrated MOS protocol into its applications. This tutorial focuses on how to set up Classx software to work with the Octopus newsroom. Although we will be focusing on this particular newsroom computer system, bear in mind that Classx products are compatible with the MOS protocol as a whole and can therefore be used with any newsroom system implementing it. For this demo, we will be using a virtual machine provided by Octopus Newsroom, which comes with the Octopus client and server software pre-installed. When the user interface is ready, we can move on and set up the Octopus client in order to be compliant with the Classx MOS API. First of all, Go to the MOS Devices section in the left panel. Here you need to add a new device using the New button on the top panel. However, we already have our device configuration, so I will just be going through this device settings. Starting from the Basic tab, make sure you enter the correct values for MOS ID which is Class X MOS, and for NCS ID, which is Octopus. Next, we need to tell the Octopus client the connection parameters to be used to reach the machine we will be using to run the required Class X software. In our case, both the media host running the Class X MOS server app software and the rundown host running the Class X MOS gateway app are the same machine. The communication ports are not, of course, the same, as you can see. Next, insert the Octopus Media port and the Octopus Rundown port, accordingly to the values you previously inserted for Media and Rundown host ports. Actually, these are quite standard parameters, and unless you have other conflicting software using the same ports, you can leave the default values. Move to the Stories tab and check the Send Empty Stories option. The remaining tabs are quite standard ones and we do not need to edit anything except for the Plugins tab. In the Plugins tab, you need to add the Classx ActiveX plugin. As for the device connection parameters, we already have the plugin configured, so let's have a look inside to see how you need to set it up. Please make sure you add a new plugin with the exact parameters you can see in this window. Changing these parameters will break the communication between the Octopus Newsroom system and the Classx software. Once you've finished configuring the Classx plugin, just press OK to save it. Once you've finished configuring the MOS device, just press OK to save it. In order to check everything was done correctly, go to the Activations tab, which you can find in the left panel right below the Devices tab we used previously. Here you should see the MOS device you just inserted. If you select it, you will see the box on the right, the currently active rundowns for this MOS device. Right now, of course, there are none. We can now move on and start the classic software required to allow for live port content playout using 
Octopus Newsroom Computer System. First of all, let's start LiveBoard SCG. There are no particular parameters which need to be set here. The default ones should just work fine. However, take your time and check the MISC preferences of Stealth CG and make sure they have the correct values for the communication port and the event port. Additionally, also check your video and audio preferences to make sure they are your desired ones. Next, let's put this aside for now and start the Moss Gateway app. Here, the first tab which opens up is the Rundowns tab. In this tab, you will later be able to see the rundowns you configured using the Octopus client, the stories for each rundown and the graphic contents associated with each story. In the bottom left corner, you can see the button you will have to use to connect to the Octopus client. As I said at the beginning of this tutorial, Octopus is just a particular newsroom computer system, aka NCS, and the Classics MOS gateway can connect to any NCS. The tab on the right is the connections one. In this tab there are two main groups, the NCS connections, which appear automatically, and where there is no configuration needed, and the graphics channels. Here you need to add a graphic channel. To do so, right-click in this area and choose Add Channel from the drop-down menu. I already have a gra graphic channel configured, so I will remove the new one. Just make sure you set up your newly added channel with the same parameters you can see in the one I have. We can now move on and go to the Preferences window. From the top status bar, choose Preferences Gateway. Here, first we need to set up the connection parameters required to connect to the NCS using the MOS protocol. As host name, we are using the host name of our virtual machine. You need to insert the IP address of the machine running your NCS. Upper port and lower port must have the same values we inserted when we set up our MOS device in the Octopus client. The same applies for NCS ID and MOS ID, which must have the same value used in the Octopus client setup. Additionally, you can enable the MySQL log. In this case, remember to insert the correct values for the host name, port, username, password and database name. Once done, the MOS Gateway app is ready and we can move on and start up the last application we will be using for this demo, the MOS Server app. This application is very simple and only provides a console where you can add the logs regarding the operations being executed. Let's move on to the Preferences window to set up the MOS Server app. From the top menu bar, choose Preferences MISC. In the first section, you need to insert the path where the Castalia CG, More CG and Coral CG templates can be found. These templates will be used by your NCS as we will see later. Next, the web server allows to have a preview of the templates directly in the NCS client. Just insert a folder 
where to store temporary snapshots, the desired preview quality and the port to be used by the web server. Last but not least, the remote communication port. The default value is fine. You only have to make sure to use the same port both here and on the ActiveX plugin setup window. Before starting our tutorial, there is one last thing we need to set up. Keep in mind that you need to execute this application with administrator privileges, that is, the ActiveX plugin. Here you need to insert the same connection parameters you inserted in the MOS server app preferences window. Click save to save your preferences and close the window. We now have all our applications set up and ready. We will now see how to prepare a story in an Octopus Rundown and play it out using Classic's Moss Gateway app and Liveboard SCG. For the rest of this tutorial, this will be the disposition of our two displays. On the first display, we have the Moss Gateway application, the Moss server and the Stealth CG application of Liveboard. On the second display we have LifeBoard SCG, where we will play out our contents and the virtual machine running the Octopus client. Once everything is started, make sure you have this initial state. In the Moss Gateway application, in the Connections tab, you should be seeing the connected status for the Graphics Channel 1. In the Stealth CG app, you should have three active connections. On the other hand, in the Octopus client devices, you should have the Classic Moss device with connection status in red saying no. If you have this initial condition, then we are ready to proceed. Let's start by connecting the Moss gateway to the Octopus NCS. Once the connection is done, in the Connections tab of the Moss gateway application, you should see the connected status for the four connections in the NCS Connections group. On the other hand, in the Octopus Client Devices section, the connection status for the Classics Moss device is now changed to green, saying yes. We now need to prepare our rundown in the Octopus Client. From the left column, Menu, navigate to Show and Playlist. Here you should have the default playlist available in the Octopus Client. We will be using the Evening News event for our tutorial. Right-click on this event and choose Rundown from the drop-down menu. Once here, we need to set up the stories for the currently selected Rundown. We will set up just one story to be used for this demo. The second one is in the list. Double-click it to enter the setup window for the selected story. Once here, choose Edit from the top menu bar. As you can see, all fields are now editable. First of all, we need to insert the script and a new MOS object. Right-click on the script where you want the MOS object to be inserted and choose New MOS object. Create using Classex. On this new window, connect the ActiveX plugin to the MOS server application by using the connect button on the bottom of this window. If the connection is successful, you should see in the directories list window the available templates. We will be using a demo template which can be found in Castalia CG project news news underscore bar underscore demo dot ccg. Double click to open it. Once you selected the desired template, you need to set it up properly. We will insert a title for this news, a description, a name for the reporter, a second description which will be placed below the reporter's name and a profile picture for the reporter. Once you're done, insert the item channel and set the trigger method to manual.
Keep in mind that you can have a preview for the template by using the scroll bar at the bottom. Once done, just save the template by using the Save button next to the Connect button. You should now have your mass object set up and insert it into the script. We are now done using the ActiveX plugin to set up our desired template. Remember to check Script Ready, Media Ready and Approved. You can now click the Save button which will save the template settings and take us back to the previous window. In the rundown list, you should now be seeing the letter R for ready in the status column for the story we just finished setting up. Now, use the top menu bar and go to Moss Toggle Ready Choose Yes in the pop-up message and this should set the status to Ready to Air. Next, go again to the top bar under MOS Activate. Check the ClassX MOS device and press the button Resend. Choose Yes in the confirmation message and then click OK to close the MOS activation window. If everything went as expected, moving now to the MOS Gateway application in the Rundowns tab, you should see the rundown we just finished setting up in the Octopus client. Select the evening news rundown and the stories list will be loaded. Among all the available stories, we prepared the second one. If you select the story, you will see that one item appears in the items table. If you now select this item, you will see in the graphics metadata the information regarding the template we previously inserted using the Octopus client. Just to make sure everything went accordingly to plans, in the Stealth CG, you should have a new content in the contents grid. This means the template was correctly prepared and is now ready to be played out using Liveboard. To do so, we just need to go to the Items table in the Moss Gateway, right-click the item and choose Play. Now, on the LiveBoard main output panel, you should see your template on air. Thanks for watching the Classics tutorial on mass integration with the Octopus Newsroom.